Adhikarana 6. Meditation in a Sitting Posture. Sutra 7. Asina Sambhavat. Mental adoration is to be pursued. Asinaha. While in a sitting posture. Sambhavat. Since it is possible in that way only. Translation. One should adore mentally while having a sitting posture, since it is possible in that way alone. The consideration about the requisite posture, etc., does not arise with regard to the mental adoration or meditation, upasana, connected with the auxiliaries of rites, since that is regulated by the rites themselves. Again, this question does not crop up in a context of full enlightenment, because knowledge is determined by the reality itself. But with regard to other kinds of upasana, one has to consider whether one should meditate in a sitting, standing, or lying posture just as one likes, or always in a sitting posture. Opponent. Now, since an upasana is a mental act, the conclusion is that there can be no rule about posture. Vedantin. Hence, the aphorist says that one should adore mentally in a sitting posture alone. Why? since it is possible in that way alone. Upasana consists in setting up a current of similar thoughts, and that is not possible for one while walking or running, because movement, etc., disturb the mind. Even for a standing man, the mind remains busy about keeping the body erect, so that it is not able then to look into subtle things. A man lying on the ground may suddenly fall asleep, but for a sitting man, innumerable troubles of this kind are easy to avoid, so that upasana becomes possible for him. Sutra 8. Dhyanascha. And because of the possibility of concentration in that way. Moreover, the meaning of the term concentration is this, namely the setting up of a continuous stream of similar thoughts. The verb to concentrate is applied figuratively to one having his limbs relaxed, gaze fixed, and mind concentrated on a single object, as in such sentences as, the heron has its mind concentrated. The woman who has her lover in exile has her mind fixed on him. This proceeds easily for one in a sitting posture. Hence also, upasana is to be undertaken by one when seated. Sutra 9 Achalatvang cha peksha, cha and upesya from the standpoint of achalatvang motionlessness. Translation and meditativeness is attributed from the standpoint of motionlessness. Furthermore, in such sentences as the earth is in meditation, as it were, Chandogya Upanishad seven six one. The assertion of meditation in the cases of the earth, etc., is made from the standpoint of motionlessness alone. That also is a sign that upasana is to be undertaken by a man when seated. Sutra 10. Smaranticha. Translation. Moreover, they mention this in the Smritis. Moreover, the worthy people mention this in such Smriti passages as having established his seat firmly in a clean place, Gita 6.11. It is because of this that the sitting postures like Padmasana, lotus seat, are prescribed in the books on yoga. Namaste. Well, this is a pretty self-explanatory topic, so if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. I want to look at it in another way, in a more analytical way, that Sadhu Om wrote in his book, Guru Vachaka Kovai, 
that Ramana Maharshi said that he, along with Shankaracharya, were teaching on the level of Vivartavada. Vivartavada, now if we go back to our good old diagram of consciousness, Vivartavada is the stage of meditation, Raja Yoga, and it is utilizing the state of Sushupti consciousness and the process of Neti Neti to get rid of all the relative aspects of consciousness. So what does this mean in terms of the present content? That in the first sentence he says, the consideration about the requisite posture, etc., does not arise with regard to the mental adoration or meditation, upasana, connected with the auxiliaries of rites, since that is regulated by the rites themselves. Now, this is a feature of Jagrat consciousness, Dvaitavada, and Karma Yoga, sacrifice according to scriptural rules. And this was the subject matter of the previous Adhikarana, which we have skipped because it's about some arcane ritualistic stuff that probably nobody cares about. And then the second sentence, he says, again, this question does not crop up in a context of full enlightenment because knowledge is determined by reality itself. So looking at consciousness again, that would be the stage of Turiya consciousness and the Ajatavada, which is the practice of Jnana Yoga or self-realization. So by process of elimination then, the teaching Shankaracharya is giving in his commentary on Brahma Sutra is Vivartavada. But is that always true of Shankara? No, because if we go through his various works in detail, we can often find some contradictory remarks that do relate to the stage of Ajatavada. And what are they? Let's take a look. From the Aparoksha Anubhuti 1, Shloka 101. The Atman, that is absolute existence and knowledge, cannot be realized without constant practice. So one seeking after knowledge should long meditate upon Brahman for the attainment of the desired goal. 102. The steps, in order, are described as follows. Control of the senses, control of the mind, renunciation, silence, space, time, posture, Mula Bandana, restraining the root. 103. Equipoise of the body, firmness of Vada, view, the control of the vital forces, withdrawal of the mind, concentration, self contemplation, and complete absorption. Now we could do a whole video series on these verses alone. But what are they? Raja Yoga. So this is Vivartavada. This is the typical style of teaching Shankaracharya uses in most of his works. But let's go deeper. Does he give a more detailed instruction or a higher instruction? Yes, he does. From Viveka Chudamani, 526. To the man who has realized his own nature, and drinks the undiluted bliss of the self, there is nothing more exhilarating than the quietude that comes of a state of desirelessness. 527. The illumined sage, whose only pleasure is in the self, ever lives at ease, whether going or staying, sitting or lying, or in any other condition. 528. The noble soul who has perfectly realized the truth and whose mental functions meet with no obstruction, no more depends upon conditions of place, time, posture, direction, moral disciplines, objects of meditation, and so forth. What regulative conditions can there be in knowing one's own self? So here he starts to move away 
from the Vivartavada conception, where meditation is the prescription and a sense of agency still prevails. But once that stage is mature and one graduates to the higher stage, where one's consciousness is no longer impeded by any conditions whatsoever, then one is in Ajatavada, Jnana Yoga. And in Jnana Yoga, the realization is already there. So there's no need for formal sadhana. Although sadhana continues, meditation continues simply by force of habit, by momentum. And this is the highest stage. Now, then why does he say posture is no more important? Let's read another verse from Aparoksha Anubhuti 2, 112. One should know that as real posture in which the meditation on Brahman flows spontaneously and unceasingly, and not any other that destroys one's happiness. 113. That which is always ready and is the support of the universe which never changes, that from which everything known has originated, and that in which the enlightened permanently reside, is known as the posture of eternal Brahman. So we're not talking about bodily, physical postures anymore. In Jnana Yoga, we're talking about a mental posture, a way of being, a way of seeing, where everything is grounded in the eternal, changeless Brahman. Now, this is where we're going. See? But this is higher. This is a higher stage than Brahma Sutra. Why is that? Because Brahma Sutra is written for a very broad, general audience of followers of the Vedic culture. It is not written for the realized elite, but for the neophytes in Advaita, who are in the stage of Vivartavada, who see the material world as illusory, but still have not fully transcended it. Those who are on the highest platform and beyond all regulative principles no longer have to observe all these rules about posture and so on. They can't go into sleep. Now that is failure to recognize the presence of Brahman in their self. They can't go into illusion, that is, thinking that the material world is real and that they are the doer and so on. They can't forget Brahman because they have realized Brahman as the self. And that is the ultimate posture. That is the ultimate mudra. Huh? A mudra is a way of holding the hands to direct the energy in a certain way. So, when the ultimate stage is reached, physical mudra, physical asana, physical posture is completely transcended. And the posture of enlightenment becomes mental, incorruptible, and steady for all time. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. Om Namah Shivaya.